Hello and welcome to Keys TV News. I'm Emily Bergen. Two people have died after a stolen car crashed into eight parked cars and caught fire in Salford last night. Sophie Dolson is in the studio with more. Sophie, what's the latest? Thank you. Well, Emily, the incident happened last night. Police say they were in a pursuit of a red Audi, but it wasn't being followed at the time. It's thought two people were killed when the vehicle burst into flames as it crashed on Lee Road in Boothstown. Six cars also caught fire and a number of houses nearby had to be evacuated. The incident has been referred to the Independent Police Complaints Commission and Lee Road is likely to be closed for most of the day. Manchester City Centre has been reopened following a bomb scare this morning. Police were called to New York Street at the Piccadilly Hotel where the package was found. There are still some delays and motorists are being urged to avoid travelling into the city centre. A court has heard that two unarmed police officers were killed in Manchester after being lured to a house by a gunman in the centre of a Man national manhunt. Dale Cregan denies killing PCs Fiona Bone and Nicola Hughes when they responded to reports of a burglary last September. He is also charged with the murders of the father and son, David and Mark Short. Armed police surrounded Preston's law court for the duration of the day. The jury have been told that the high police presence at court is not unusual in cases like this. The prosecutor, Mr Nicholas Clark, said Cregan lay in wait with a Glock firearm with an extended magazine that was fully loaded. PC Fiona Bone and PC Nicola Hughes attended. As soon as they arrived, Cregan, who was on the run, shot the officers repeatedly until his magazine was empty. The families of PCs Fiona Bone and Nicola Hughes arrived at court to watch the beginning of the trial. The case is said to be listed for 12 weeks and the high police presence will remain throughout the duration of the trial. An 11-month flood defence project has been put in place to help reduce the risk of flooding to over 2,000 homes and businesses in Salford. Tom Lilly investigates. Right now, the River Irwell may look tranquil. You may not know, however, that this river is very liable to burst its banks. As you can see from this marker, the flood in 1866 caused the river to reach over two metres. In order to prevent future floods, the government has set aside funds to go towards developing flood defences. In, in this part of Salford, the River Irwell is a, a sort of an S-shaped, uh, loops round twice. And in the uh, event of a flood, all the low-lying uh, land within those loops uh, is at risk uh, from flooding. Uh, at the moment, there is um, a uh, flood basin, which is based at Littleton Road. It's uh, the Salford Sports Village, used uh, for playing football uh, when there isn't a flood. Uh, but in the event of a flood, that can be used to hold back the water. Uh, but uh, it doesn't hold enough water back to fully protect the properties. The government is prepared to put up uh, a large part of the funding for a £16 million second flood basin, which will uh, bring the, uh, the standard of protection up to uh, what we expect today, given uh, the history of flooding and the, uh, the possibility of uh, climate change. Um, in the 1960s, sheet piling was uh, put in to uh, protect the banks from falling into the river and, uh, and blocking the flow of the water. Um, that, that's showing some wear and tear, so uh, uh, the Environment Agency are about to spend uh, £1.7 million on uh, shoring up those uh, uh, defences, uh, basically by putting boulders uh, into the river, which is a cheaper and more environmentally friendly way uh, of protecting the banks. So that, again, uh, will protect the 2,000 or so properties uh, in the area. I'm Tom Lilly, reporting for Keys News. This week saw Media City host the audio, acoustics and video engineering for potential graduate employees. The event gave student placements and graduate opportunities and a chance to meet with representatives of several prestigious audio engineering companies such as Midas, Rumble, Dolby and Furcroft with many more each offering unique entry into the world of acoustic engineering. Students were offered advice and guidance, as well as valuable contacts within the industry. Comedians, dancers and fire eaters are among those in the northwest hoping to catch Simon Cowell's eye. The Britain's Got Talent auditions have been taking place at Salford Quays. After already travelling to Cardiff, London and Glasgow, celebrity judges Amanda Holden, David Walliams, Alicia Dixon and Simon Cowell made an appearance at Salford Quay's Lowry Theatre at the latest round of auditions for the seventh series of the ITV talent show Britain's Got Talent. 
The people of Manchester ventured in their hundreds to try out, to try out for the show, arriving at the Digital World Centre to sign in. The judges had a warm welcoming for the people of Manchester and Salford on Saturday when walking down the red carpet, whilst taking a moment to sign autographs and take pictures with their beloved fans. Celebrity host Anton Deck also made a surprise appearance on the red carpet to pay respects to the people who turned out, as well as welcoming the TV audience to Manchester on the ITV cameras. The teams are now on their way to Birmingham for the final set of auditions. The show is said to be back on TV later this year, however no date has been clarified yet. Peter Kay, Prince Philip and Paddy McGuinness have all been through the Digital Performance Lab at the University of Salford recently. Now there has been a radio programme recording to commemorate a special anniversary. Thomas Deegan finds out more. The Bradshaws have been on British radio since 1983. A comedy with many voices but one man. Now they celebrate the 30th anniversary special. I'm always, I'm always a little bit stunned by it all really now because we've been doing set up for, for the day. And, um, and the facilities here are absolutely fantastic. All I have to do now is throw the script away and, and try and talk properly. And, and when they phoned me up to say that there was a Radio 4 documentary being made about uh, celebrating 30, year, 30 years of the Bradshaws on radio, um, I was most surprised. And I said, you can't be talking about me. But now, apparently, apparently I'm a listed building. Warming up the audience tonight is Tom Shaw, a university student with a prestigious slot. Uh, yeah, I do stand-up comedy on the circuit and I got to meet uh, Andy Wilkinson, the guy who's running tonight on the stand-up circuit and that's how I ended up getting offered this role while I've been at Salford University. I got the brief and I decided to, to look them up and I think it's uh, a very funny show. I think that people should should watch it. I think it, I think it's, it should be more of an institution than it is. Not to say that it isn't, but I kind of feel like uh, if people researched it, they, they'd enjoy what they find. I first heard the Bradshaws in uh, when there was a chap called Phil Wood, who was um, a DJ at Piccadilly Radio in Manchester. And he was a DJ and he played it. And the very first thing I ever heard was, um, was the, the Bradshaws coming on. It was part of the show. And what Buzz did very cleverly Ooh. was that he realised that in those days you could drop a record and put something in rather than them have to jig the, the programme around. The Bradshaws are like real life, aren't they? It's like the royal family, it's like uh, like Mrs Brown as well now, you know, like that kind of, you've got that main character. And when you do comedy, you sort of like, you need strong characters so that you can develop the comedy from that and they get a bit of conflict and a bit of this and a bit of that going on. The programme recorded will be shown on BBC Radio 4 on February the 25th. I'm Thomas Deegan reporting for Keys TV News. There's an Indian dance group held a festival celebration at the Lowry Theatre on Monday to celebrate India's heritage, arts and culture. Jasmine Patel reports. Calming rhythms, mimes, brilliant costumes and energetic dance moves were experienced at the Lowry as Manchester's very own Indian dance group, Upasana, showcased their talents in classical music and dance. Upasana has put on this celebration called Utsa. It is a festival of Indian dance and music which explores and expresses Indian identity and fascinating philosophy by reflecting on its artistic heritage and culture. This is about sharing a style of Indian classical dance and music. The dance is called Bhaktanatya and the music style is called Carnatic music. So it's about sharing this classical style with the school in specific. Schools in Manchester, most of the schools which came today they have had no exposure to Indian dance and probably not even to Hinduism. The festival has been described as a dance that explores cultural identity, a swirl of colours and energy that leaves a lasting impression. Well, right now I'm in the, in the costume of Kalinga the snake. I'm in the costume of Krishna and we dance, we just dance with Kalinga the name, which is where Krishna defeats me, Kalinga, the poisonous snake. snake. So, yeah. It's our mother who teaches us, so we've kind of, kind of grown up with it. Yeah, so we've been dancing for a really long time. We've been dancing around, I was three or four, and same, same for me, four, four, four yeah. So yeah. The celebration was a huge success, and we'll be in the spotlight once again this Sunday. This is Jasmine Patel for Keys News TV. An art exhibition has been launched to showcase the work of university students. Sophie Bennett reports. The edition showcase saw students collaborating with professional artists to create prints, drawings and paintings. 
The aim of the project is to highlight the limitations of art. Free prints were given away on the night in an attempt to make art accessible in every home. A creative space was opened in Manchester City Centre, motivating students to develop their talent. Workshops were held for two weeks, showing students how to emulate prints from the University of Salford's art collection. Professional designers Ryan Doyle and Mark Edwards joined together with John Powell Jones to inspire the students. Mark Edwards spoke of how the event came about. Well, we got approached uh, to go and have a look at the Salford Art Collection, uh, Salford University Art Collection. Um, and from seeing that, um, it kind of got us thinking about uh, like affordable art and working editions. Um, and yeah, it kind of, like, it kind of snowballed into this really. The exhibition attracted many people and it was a huge success. Both artists and students thought it was a valuable experience. Sophie Bennett, Keys TV News. Now a recap of our main story on Keys TV News. Two people have died following a crash in Salford. Police say they were in pursuit of a red Audi, but it wasn't being followed at the time. It's thought two people were killed when the vehicle burst into flames as it crashed on Lee Road in Boothstown. Six cars also caught fire and a number of houses nearby had to be evacuated. That's all from us today. Thank you for watching us. Goodbye. Thank you.